All right, and we're back. You've been looking at Gibbs Free Energy here. Um, Gibbs Free Energy essentially is the amount of energy that's left over to do work. That's why it's free energy. Um, we'll talk about that more a little bit later. So as we look at this equation, we talked about how to determine if uh, delta H is um, or if uh, something is spontaneous or not, and it kind of depended on delta S of the universe. Well, there's something that we can just like, signify with something that's spontaneous or not, and that's delta G. If delta G is negative, you have something that is spontaneous for sure. If it is positive, it is not. Notice what it depends on. It depends on the enthalpy, and it depends on the entropy. And it can depend on the temperature. So that's where it says depends here because it depends on the delta H and the delta S value and what's going on with the temperature there. We can have some different things going on. If the delta H is negative, that makes this negative. If delta S is um, positive, that makes this positive. And if delta S is positive and delta H is negative, it doesn't matter what the temperature is. It's a positive number because it's in Kelvin. No matter what, delta G has to be a negative number. Um, and then you have the different situations with delta H versus delta S, and and then the other for sure case is if delta H is positive minus a temperature, which is a positive number, and now if my delta S is also a negative, a negative and a negative would be a positive delta H plus a positive T delta S, so this overall would be positive for sure, which makes it not spontaneous for sure. Kind of talked about it a little bit before. Moving on down. So what units does delta S have to be in? You notice in those blue pages in your book in A20 and A21 that delta S is measured in joules per K mole. That's what delta S is measured in. It's in joules. Well, if you're going to use in that equation above, you're going to have to compare it to what everything else is in, and that's in kilojoules. So you're going to make sure you put it in kilojoules when you get done or if you're going to use it in that equation. Uh, we already kind of talked about this. It has to be negative for it to be spontaneous, positive if it is not spontaneous. Moving down to the next. Uh, so what's it depend on? It depends on um, here the value of, since we have delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, which is on your green sheet if you haven't noticed, because it's used a lot. Um, it depends on how big these numbers are. It depends on how big those delta H and delta S are, and it can depend on the um, temperature. It can be very dependent. We'll see that here in a little bit later. Uh, so, as long as delta G is negative, it's spontaneous. But it, can, it depends on these two if it's going to be spontaneous or not. All right. Now we've done delta H before. Products minus reactants. Let's just do all three of them. Hopefully we've already seen this, but I'm just going to plug in some numbers here real quick. Um, I'm taking them from the um, ChemQuest people here, so I forget exactly if all these line up perfectly with what's in the book. Um, if I go and do products minus reactants for this, I'm just going to put the values that I have, 1206.9, and that's kilojoules. I have negative 635.1 kilojoules for the CaO, getting big letters here, and I have negative 393.5 kilojoules. Remember these are um, delta H of formation, how much energy is released with each of those compounds getting together. So delta H of the whole reaction is going to be products minus reactants, which is 178.3 kilojoules. Delta S is in joules, 92.9 joules. This is 38.2 joules. And the carbon dioxide is 213.7 joules. For an overall, when you take products minus reactants, an overall amount of 159 joules. I lost my joule here. For the kilojoules. For delta G, I get a negative 1128.8. Again, these may not match up perfectly with what is in your book. This is a minus 603.5, and this 
carbon dioxide is a minus 394.4. These are all kilojoules. I do products minus reactants for delta G, and I get 130.9. You might say, well, why would we ever use the other formula you gave me if I can just do products minus reactants? Well, like before, there are two different ways, or many different ways, to find delta G. In this case, if we don't have our values of delta G for everything, but we have our values for delta S and delta, delta H and the temperature, we can just do this. So what are we proving here? The goal here is to prove that 178, so I'm going to put in my delta H number, 178.3 kilojoules, minus the temperature, which they say is 298, times the delta S, which is 0.159 kilojoules, got to be in kilojoules, and if I multiply that, subtract it, I get, voila, 130.9 kilojoules, which is the same thing here. So that just proves that it works. Is it spontaneous? A big old no, because delta G is positive. Nope, can't be spontaneous then. Delta G is positive. By varying the temperature, is it possible to change the spontaneity? Yes, it is, because if this temperature goes way up, from 298 up to a much bigger number, well, at some point, this value is going to be negative enough to make this final delta G negative. So yes, if temperature, if temperature goes way up enough, delta G will be negative. So that would make it spontaneous. So temperature can have a big effect on spontaneity. All right. Coupling reactions. You read about how this works here. Sometimes you have a reaction that's not spontaneous, but if you put it with another reaction that is, you can kind of like when we added reactions before, we can make, when we can add up those delta G's. Remember when we did K's, we can't just add them up. We, um, we had to multiply the K's. Well, this is different. This is what we did with like Hess's law. We add up two reactions, and we can just add up the H's. Well, we did the same thing with gives free energy, we can do the same thing with delta G. If I add these two react reactions, which we, this is the overall final reaction, if we do that, we can just add up the delta G's, and then those two reactions together, if we look at this total reaction, is now a negative number. What's so great about that? Well, if it's negative, it's spontaneous. Well, why isn't O2 written? Well, if we look at this last part, I have 3O2 on this side, I have 3O2 on that side, they cancel each other out. So, um, just like Hess's law, that occurred way back in chapter six. It's not written when they cancel each other out. All right, number nine. I want to move this down a little bit. So, first of all, for number nine, I need to calculate delta um, G for the first reaction, this reaction up here. Calculate delta G. If I calculate delta G for this reaction, Delta G for that reaction uh, without putting all the values in there. Delta G equals 838 kilojoules for that reaction up here. Which means it is not um, spontaneous. It doesn't just happen. But if we couple that with one of these other two reactions, the question is which one would be valuable? Well, if we figure out the delta G, which I hope you've done, if I figure out the delta G here, it's negative 800.8 kilojoules. Again, might be slightly off from what your book is giving you. And this one is negative 1404.9 kilojoules. All right. So, if I add two reactions together, negative 38 and negative, or sorry, positive 838 and negative 800, I still don't get a negative number. However, if I add this one, put a star on it, let's underline it. Ooh, if I could only bold it and italicize it. Oh, well. And if I combine this one and this one, I could get an overall delta G that is negative if I couple those two together. And that is cause for celebration. Woo! All right, what would be the overall reaction by coupling those two together? Well, I'm going to put that right up here. 
would be Al203 plus 2Fe plus 2CH3 OH plus 3O2. That's a lot of stuff. Yield Fe203 plus 2Al plus 2CO2 plus 4H2O. For a total, grand total, delta G, which is a negative we know, but it will be negative 566.9 kilojoules. And that, my friends, is the gist of Gibbs free energy. Now, we're going to do the back of that sheet that you did before um, with entropy and take a look at those numbers.